Um, we try to place like those Easter eggs as like fun things for the players, but they might have not discovered that yet. Mm -hmm. Like there's one actually <laughs> very interesting fact. Uh, we joke about that, but there's a one person chance that if you play the flex emote and your camera is facing at your player, you will hear another fart sound, but a real one, this one. <laughs> so <laughs> it's one person chance. Welcome to Forging Eternum, the place where we talk about anything Eternum related. And today we have the audio team here. My name is Jean-Edouard Miclo, so known as Jed. And we have Michael Finley, our senior sound designer, and Kyle Belly, sound designer as well. Unfortunately, some uh, team members of the audio team are in here today, but um, we're going to talk about, you know, what are your favorite sounds in the game? Something that stands out to me, and this kind of stood out when I, before I even started here, was um, the UI sounds when you gather stuff. <laughs> it's not like a huge thing, like part of the game, like in-game, but you hear it all the time. And it's always, has always been something that uh, is really pleasing to me for whatever reason. I like the textures that it has. Yeah, there's something about the UI sound, right? They need to be satisfying. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, they need to be part of like the style of New World. So we can't have anything sci-fi or yeah. anything too clunky. It needs to feel like part of like that world. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a fine balance to find, right? Yeah, when and it feels like it matches the visuals really well too, mm. in addition to matching the the overall palette that we have for the game. What about you, Michael? Uh, you know what? I would say probably my favorite, at least one of my favorite groups of sounds in the game would have to be, uh, you know, sound, the like the distant chatters. Uh, you know, they're they're not sounds that are like in the forefront. You know, they're not the sounds like when you're fighting a character that you're hearing. It's more the sounds of... You're uh, talking about like the AIs that yeah, just like the, make little vocalizations right, in right. the distance, right? Yeah, yeah, the creatures that you don't necessarily see but you hear from a distance. So we have like the, uh, you know, the Dryads and the, uh, you know, even all the, the Ancients in Brimstone and, you know, any faction. It's, you're hearing these like, you know, chatters from a distance. I know we've all crafted mm -hmm. some of these sounds and it's always... It's it's always an interesting aspect of you know sound design for us because it's like we're we're kind of drawing attention. Um. <laughs> um, can you tell me like a little story about like maybe one of those uh, the sounds that you made? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, this is the best audio team. Ever <laughs> 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 it's all good though. You guys like could be prouder, and the players love the work. Thank you, you Scott. Like, Thanks, Scott. Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this is live TV, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like you were saying about um, the sounds of those chatters and how they contribute to the open world. And do you have like a little fun story maybe to share? Right, right. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, a lot of time, like for the dryads, for instance. Uh, you know, used uh, like a rubber swimming fin to like find some textures. That kind of I mean, that's that's the thing we do a lot as opposed to like going to animals or going to the human voice as source. We like to find like prop objects that elicit some kind of unique, uh, you know, kind of audio quality. And for the the dryads for their chatters, you know, we messed around with like this rubber swimming fin and like rubbing it, and it has this cool vocal cavity that just made it sound like it's this you know, kind of fantastical alien-like creature, but from a distance. And it's just, it, you know, really kind of grabs your attention. It's like, it works very well with like one of the rules that we live by here and we work by in, in the studio. It's, uh, when we work on a new sound, we have to find the most familiar sound, something that makes you feel like it's, it's something that you can relate to, something that you've experienced before that you know, like this rubber uh, swimming fin that's like, you know, the, a prop that you find at the uh, sports store. And um, at the same time, used on an alien looking, like an angry earth character, and the juxtaposition of those two ideas makes something that's a little bit un unexpected, right? Um, and that's one of my favorite part about um, the sounds of the game, actually. Another funny uh, topic that I've seen on Reddit and other social media is that, you know, sometimes we experiment a little bit too far, or right? we try things to surprise our players and keep them entertained. And then uh, it just doesn't work. Like one of the examples, like the people have mentioned, we had fart sounds in the game, like the epic farts. <laughs> and uh, it's actually funny because, you know, like we used it on the rapier 
uh, what is it called, like the flesh uh, ability. It was actually like a rocket that sort of had like a, had a lot of flair, like a <laughs> We crossfade, you know, the close up proximity sound with like the distant sound. And then we hear that it feels more of a distant <laughs> rocket sounds that had this rotation with the animation. And uh, players just, you know, it didn't click. Yeah, it didn't work. So um, we had to remove that sound because you just created like a bad experience. Uh -huh. um, and the idea was like we wanted to push those distant sounds. We don't want to just like reuse, you know, the Warhammer has thunder, you know, and, it's, and thunder is an easy choice because that's a naturally occurring distant sound in the world. It's easy to capture that. When you hear that sound, it reads as distant and powerful. So it's like, how are we, for, for all the other weapons, you know, the rapier, how is this, this uh, small sword gonna, you know, from a distance, how would that sound, you mm -hmm. know, without having to use an explosion or, you know, thunder. So we're always trying to, you know, maybe that was, you know, we pushed it too far with that rocket yeah, twirling. Yeah. It's part of the process where we have to fail to actually find something more exciting than if it was just a lambda random sound. So, you know, like I think like the, the spear as well, where we tried, if it was actually something that didn't go public, but we tried internally to have this move of like, you know, the spear spinning above the player's head. And the, the analogy was like, it looked like an helicopter. So the first thing we tried was like, let's try to put a helicopter sound in the distance. And then all of a sudden, yeah, that's, you know, no brainer. Everybody would guess that it sounded like a helicopter. And then we tried to use that rhythm, like the, you know, like, and inject that metadata into another sound, which is made of like blades. And then now it becomes more familiar and, and more um, part of the world. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a part of our process that, you know, we, we, we have to fail to succeed. Um, yeah. What do you think, Kyle? Yeah, if you're not um, trying to push boundaries and experimenting, um, then you don't get as many of those happy accidents that come up with some of the most iconic things um, that you hear. Um, you know, having time to be able to try something, go down a path, go down a road, and like, this is what I'm, my goal is here. Here's how I'm going to try to achieve it. And then by the end of that, you get your result and it's underwhelming. Mm -hmm. And maybe you learn some things along the way of what worked and what didn't. And in the end, it's a good, uh, it's a great experience because then you get to figure out, okay, this didn't work. Let me dive in again, try something completely different. And then, you know, the more chances you have to have a crack at something, the more chances that you'll have to make something that's memorable. And we, we do play with that idea on Easter eggs as well, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we've tried that a few times. Um, uh, actually, you know, like one interesting aspect for our players is that uh, you use like, you, you wrote some words as part of the spectrum of sound. So if mm -hmm. players listen to that sound or they record the sound with like a spectral analyzer, they will actually see words that are placed in there. Um, we try to place like those Easter eggs as like fun things for the players, but they might have not discovered that yet. Like there's one actually <laughs> very interesting fact. Uh, we joke about that, but there's a one person chance that if you play the flex emote and your camera is facing at your player, you will hear another fart sound, but a real one, this one. <laughs> so <laughs> it's one person chance. Uh, so yeah, we, we love putting those, those little Easter eggs. Yeah, they're fun, and, like trying to push the envelope. Mm -hmm. All right, and that brings us to the uh, community question. Can I ask one? Um, okay, so which sounds resonate with you guys as players and which sounds twist your ear in the wrong way? All right, and uh, if you like this video, please follow us, subscribe, and see you in a tournament. <laughs>